this morning. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. We thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for you giving us our first inheritance today, which is life, for allowing us, Lord, to see another day, another day in your glory, another day in your presence, another day to get some things right. Father, we honor you today and we exalt you. We exalt you, Lord God. For, Father, you are great and you are worthy to be praised. Lord, it is our greatest desire to bring you glory. Our greatest desire, Lord God, to make you smile. Father, today we're desiring for you to give us compassion and a love that will draw those that we're able to encounter today closer to us. Draw them closer, Lord God, that they may see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. Lord, we exalt your holy name today. As we enter into your presence, Lord God, we humble ourselves, Father God, in your presence, and we bow. Ask you, Lord, to forgive us of every sin, every transgression, and every iniquity. Lord, we need you to wash us clean, Heavenly Father, that we may be clean in your sight. Purge us, as the psalmist says, Lord God, with his sin, that the new skin will be revealed, Lord God. And we'll be able to stand before you with clean hands and a clean heart, but only through Christ. And Father, we may be able to connect with you on a level deeper, Lord God, today. With greater understanding today, Lord God. Father, we're coming together in this platform, Lord God, in a safe environment where we can Lift up your holy name, Lord God, where we can learn of you, Lord God, where we can grow closer together in spirit, Lord God, and in truth. Father God, allow your word today to minister to our hearts, to our minds. Allow there to be, Lord God, a shaking, Lord God, a breaking, Heavenly Father, because we understand that the precious oil will never flow unless there's a breaking. The anointing that you've placed in each and every one of us, Lord God. Unless we're stretched, unless we're broken, unless, Lord God, we learn to die to ourselves, we will never be able to allow it to flow freely to those that you have called us to. Help us to be better examples of your royal family. Better examples, Lord God, of your sons and your daughters. Servants in your kingdom, Lord God, who are obedient even unto death. Lord, we desire to follow the examples of Christ and true disciples, students, Lord God, who study to show ourselves approved, who are not ashamed, but willing to learn, able to learn, desiring to learn, Lord God, to rightly divide the word of truth and not wrongly connect it. Lord, we thank you. For this time together. We thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity. Now we ask you, Lord God, to heal the fertile ground, heal the soils in our minds and in our hearts. Break it up, Lord God, that fallow ground. Every hard place, Lord God, we ask you to allow your spirit to go in now, to turn it. Give me, Lord God, the words to say. I ask you now, Father God, to sit Chantel down and raise up your Holy Spirit within me. Minister to your sons and to your daughters that today, Lord God, we'll receive that which you have for us. We will understand it, Lord God. We'll have a kingdom perspective, Lord God. We'll have a heart of gratitude and, Lord God, a heart of repentance. Lord God, our mind is made up, Lord God, and we are committed to that which you've called us to. Help us, Father God, to speak your plan, your will, your way. To abandon, Lord God, our to-do list and our agenda and seek you for yours. And you may be glorified and magnified in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, intercessors. Amen. Today we're going to jump right into the word we're studying this week about God Almighty. El Shaddai, the Lord God who is more than enough. Amen. 
And yesterday we got some of the background information. I absolutely love giving you that foundation so that on Mondays you will not only just get um, some understanding, but that you'll get the background, you'll get the cultural information, you'll get that information of the translations from Hebrew and Greek so that we can begin to apply this word, so we can begin to better understand and have clarity. Amen. But God reveals himself as El Shaddai, God Almighty, to Abram. And he tells him of the everlasting covenant that he will establish with him and his descendants. And so until the time of Moses, when another divine name was revealed, the patriarchs called El Shaddai. They considered El Shaddai. They knew and trusted and leaned on El Shaddai as the covenant name of God. So when we pray to El Shaddai, we invoke the name of the one who nothing is impossible. Amen. The creator of heaven and earth. The creator of every living thing. Our focus scripture always long is coming out of Genesis 17. And I read a great portion of it yesterday, so I'm just going to read verse 1 and 2, and then I'm going to jump down to verse 17 because I want you to read a little bit more than that. Amen? Amen. If you have your sword, Genesis 17, verse 1, reads like this. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. I will confirm my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your numbers. Jumping down. Abram fell face down and he laughed and said to himself, Will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? Again, that was Genesis 17, verse 1 and 2, and then verse 17. But I want you to read Genesis 17, verse 1 through 8. And then read verse 15 through 17. Now, if you like, you can read all of it. And that may give you a little bit more clarity, some understanding. But I want us this morning to take some time to praise God. Because no matter how tough life is, no power in heaven or on earth can taint or change his plans for each of us as long as we follow him. I want us to offer thanks that God has made an everlasting covenant with each and every one of us. Amen? I want us to take some time to go in our prayer closets this morning and just get in the presence of God. Confess any doubt about God's ability or his desire to help each and every one of us. How many of us truly know that God desires to be there for us? And I want you to ask God for the faith to believe that he can show his strength in us and for us when we are at our weakest. Amen? You know, sometimes I believe it's easier um, to believe in God's power on a grand scale, like creating the universe or sustaining it through time, reigning over the centuries than it is to believe in his power to keep one simple promise. You know, we see that the universe is still evolving. We know that from the moment he said, let there be light, light has been reproducing itself at the speed of light. That's why new galaxies are being located, new planets are being found. There's a constant growth. Amen? That's why plants keep reproducing. Animals keep reproducing. Human, mankind keeps reproducing. Amen? But Abraham's life and his legacy offer a study in God's promise-keeping ability. If you just take a moment to look at it truly. Think about it. Abraham was Almost 90 when God first spoke to him and told him that he would have a son. That means Sarah had to be about 80. And the two of them 
for some reason, at different points and different times, doubted whether or not God was going to keep that promise. At first, Abraham, Abram was definitely sure that God was going to do it. And remember, Sarai, before that was before he changed their name, Abram and Sarai. Sarah laughed to herself. She had a chuckle that just wouldn't stop. <laughs> How could a woman of my age bear a child? Her thoughts, right? I know that many of us have thought that, but science has told us and shown us, and we've seen and read stories now of women in their mid-50s, early 60s, giving birth. We are daughters of Sarah. We are sons of Abraham. Amen? And so when time began to pass, they decided they'd help God. Sarah decided that she would involve her handmaiden, Hagar, the Egyptian slave. And we talked about her on last week, amen? El Roi, the God who sees us, right? Amen. And so Hagar, Sarah gave, Sarah gave Hagar to her husband to marry, that she may bear a child for him. Now, because she was Sarah, Sarai's handmaiden, that meant the child would be technically Sarai's child. This child would be the legacy. Thus, Ishmael was born. Somewhere in the translation, I think we all feel like we need to help God along sometimes. I can honestly say that Pastor Trey and I have fallen into that trap, and we pray now that we are more mature. We pray now that we have learned a few lessons and we've grown some from it. Amen? But what about the promises that he makes to each and every one of us? Like the one about helping us in times of temptation. One of the most challenging verses in all the scripture for many of us to believe, to hold it, to take to heart is not the one about creation or the virgin birth or even the resurrection. It's the one that says, and God is faithful. He will not let us be tempted beyond what we can bear. But when you're tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. Did you catch that? So that you can stand up under it under the weight of the temptation. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. You know, the first time I actually read the full translation, not, not the English translation, because I, I tell you all time and time again, English is a very poor translation of the Hebrew, the Greek, the Aramaic scriptures. But to, you know, because, you know, scripture tells us, you know, that he will provide a window of escape a way of escape, right? But the actual translation says that he will provide a way out so that we can stand up under it. It's being the pressure. It being the temptation. So what does it mean when we're tempted to scream at a perpetually difficult child, to despair when faced with life-altering illnesses, to sleep with our boyfriends before marriage, to have us there because our marriage seems desperately lonely. Doesn't it mean turning? Not to ourselves to solve the problem as if we actually could, right? But turning in faith to the all-powerful, almighty God, the one who is able to help us to find the way out. So the next time you feel tempted beyond the power to resist, Call on the name of El Shaddai, the Lord God who is more than enough, the all-powerful, almighty God. Asking him to help you bear up under it, confident. Remember we said the prefix for con, the C-O-N and F-I means in faith. So confident of his ability to sustain and to bless you. 
knowing that powerful, knowing that God is able to strengthen us. So in our weakness, as scripture tells us and reminds us, that his strength is made strong. So it's never in our own power, never in our own might, never in our own ability, but it is all God. Amen? And as I was meditating on that this morning, the Lord began to speak to me. And I thought that this was absolutely awesome. He started talking about something beautiful. He took over to Matthew 26, verse 10. Now, this is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. And um, I think C.C. Wynan has sang this song beautifully. I've heard it sang many, many times by many different people. But her rendition of the alabaster box was beautiful because it truly depicts this story in Scripture. But it says, Matthew 26, verse 10, read there with me. Jesus said to them, why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. My Lord, wouldn't you love for God to say that about you? Wouldn't you love for Jesus to let you know that you've done a beautiful thing? You know, um, after I went through my first divorce, I pawned and sold and gave away a lot of my jewelry, everything that was gold, whether it was 14, 18, 24 karat gold, I gave it all away, all of it. Um, and in the process of that, I had the opportunity as I was working for the police department at Selwyn College. I was actually the dispatch training coordinator there. And while I was there, um, on Fridays, they would have this thing called Market Friday. And so vendors from all over the city would come, and they would set up tables in the um, food court area, all outside the food court. As long as it was beautiful outside, they had tents set out so they wouldn't, you know, be all out in the sun, but there were tents lining all over in the middle of the quad. And we would just get a chance and an opportunity to just go from one vendor to the next. And so it was security, of course. I got the opportunity. I didn't get a chance to get out the office much. But on Market Friday, someone would always come and give me a chance to go up, especially if they saw something that had, you know, like a good deal where I could get things for my kids or things of that nature because they would have reduced prices because they were selling to students, majority. Majority of the people there were students. So I remember going up there, and there was a jewelry store that was going out of business. And they had this beautiful, I mean, everything there was silver, um, titanium, platinum. Now, don't get me wrong, the platinum was definitely more expensive. The titanium was more expensive. However, the beautiful silver, sterling silver, was absolutely gorgeous, and it was rock-bottom prices. And I purchased a lot of unique, different kinds of rings because I like different and unique rings. And it's amazing because I only have maybe one ring left from that time. Because literally people would tell me, oh, my goodness, that's beautiful. Where did you get that from? And if someone told me that they liked something I had on more than twice, I would give them, to, I would take it off and give it to them. Now, within reason, of course, if it was my outfit, I may go home and wash it if it was their size and bring it back to them. But for the most part, it was mostly my jewelry, my accessories, things like that. Um, and that started because the Lord told me, you know, um, one day to bless a young lady with something I had that she thought was beautiful. And how many of you know that when we're children, we're a little selfish? Let's just be honest. Some of us who are grown and adults, we're still selfish. But um, in, in your mind, when God says give something, you're like, it's mine. You know, it's irreplaceable. It, it was a gift to me. You know, I, I kind of like this, Lord. What do you mean give this to this person? I don't even know them. But how many of us know that God has a plan? You know, we stand there and we think, why would you ask me to do that? Never wondering what this 
other person could be going through that God felt the need to ask his child, his son, his daughter, to bless someone else with something that they had been blessed with, something that brought you complete joy, something that you thought was absolutely beautiful and may actually be new. Like my self-plan didn't really like God's plan to give away those things that I liked. But it was God's plan that was laid out before me. And God was asking me to give up something that meant a lot to me, that another woman could be blessed. It seemed kind of crazy the first time he did it. It seemed absolutely unnecessary. Some, you know, that, that was how I felt. Just be honest. But in this incident, through the strength of Christ, I chose to obey even though I didn't want to, even though it hurt a little, and it cost me big because, again, they weren't free. They just were cheaper than it was had I gone into the store. And it was crazy because as I was walking through the market Friday that exact same day later on, the vendors were cleared out and they were packing up. And the vendor that did the silver, I remember the gentleman stopping me, and he said, my wife was so blessed by you speaking into her life. Now, mind you, I didn't do anything special. I just told her what the Lord said to say. And it blessed her so that he had set aside rings, and don't get me wrong, I don't wear the average size ring that women wear. Let, let's be perfectly clear. I love my father. I love my father dearly, and I still love his memory. And I'm grateful for the time I had to spend with him. Would have loved more, but I have hands like my father. So my ring finger alone is a size ten. I don't know about the rest of you, but I've never really thought of that as a dainty, girly size for a woman. A ring finger is a size ten. Amen. So you can imagine that the rest of my fingers are not much smaller. So we're talking seven and a half, eight, nine, you know, at the smallest. But this gentleman had set aside two other rings. And then he set aside two rings that were kind of masculine, but they were very nice and very simple. And he said, you said you had two sons and that both of them were very thin. I said, yes, sir. And um, he gave me two rings and said he hopes fit them. And each one spoke to their personality. Now, he had never met my children, had never seen them. And to be honest with you all, I've only seen that, that gentleman and his wife one other time beyond that. But he blessed me with four other rings because he said I blessed his wife with a word from the God, and it encouraged her. Even though they were losing their store, even though they had to go out of business and it wasn't their heart's desire. Amen? And so, again, God softens our childish hearts sometimes, you know? And when I gave the woman the very ring that this gentleman had given to me and told her that the Lord said to bless you with this. As I silently confessed my selfish thoughts to God, God began to pour a deep joy within my soul. He showed me that my sacrifice was an act of worship to him. Blessings boomerang right before my eyes, and it came right back to me. My heart was filled. And I was humbled. I actually thank God for allowing me to participate in this particular moment with him and with her. It was a beautiful thing. There was just some, you know, there are just some times that we'd rather give gifts, you know, that don't cost us too much. But that's probably something that only I wrestle with, right? Maybe not. It's hard to open our hands with things that we hold dear, isn't it? Some of us struggle 
with an unwillingness to give away material things or even money sometimes. Others of us hold tight to our schedules, our afflictions, our positions, our jobs, or our availability. Still more of us hold tightly to our children, our grandchildren, our spouses, our friends, our parents, and even other people in our lives that we want to keep a tight rein on. But the Bible addresses this issue and shows us a beautiful picture of surrendering. The devotion of Mary of Bethany. You know, the offering she poured onto Jesus' feet was worth a year's wages. She lavishly poured her costly perfume, her attention and her affection, her time and her worship on Jesus because she loved him. He was her savior, her friend, her hope, the healer who had miraculously brought life back into the stench of death that had fallen on her brother Lazarus. While Jesus was in Bethany, just going to the scripture, Matthew 26, starting at verse 6. While Jesus was in Bethany in the home of the man known as Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very expensive oil, perfume which she poured on his head as he was reclined at the table. When the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Why this waste, they asked. This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. Now, don't get me wrong. Let, let's, let's be honest and break this down. It wasn't that they were concerned about the poor, nor were they concerned about the oil. It was just the thought that they felt it was a waste. So they tried to ration the thought because they knew that he could understand and hear the thought. It could be given to the poor. Going back to scripture, aware of this, Jesus said to them, why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will have with you, the poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. I tell you the truth, wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Matthew 26, verse 6 to 13. Now, jump, verse 10 says, the message, in the message version, this is paraphrasing, right? The message version says, she has just done something wonderful, significant for me. So when I read this story, I'm compelled to wonder, when God looks at my life, does he see a beautiful thing? Does he see me doing something or anything that is wonderfully significant for him? What do you think he sees when he looks at your life? Does he see a beautiful thing? When we open our hands, the hands of our lives, to God's presence, to his service, and for his glory, rest assured, God will see a beautiful thing. You know, Pastor Trey always says that we should have the heart and the mindset of Smith Wiggleworth. Remember, he said to hold everything with an open hand, to possess I'm sorry, to have everything and possess nothing. Because at any time, God could blow on it and it be gone. So that means to hold our children, our loved ones, our spouses, our parents, even our very own lives with an open hand. God is yours. If it wasn't for you and for your blessings, your grace, your mercy, I wouldn't have it anyway. So we hold it with an open hand. When we obey God's promptings and listen to his voice that whispers to our very souls, he fills us with peace, satisfaction, and his beauty. Amen. 
So can you imagine that? That God would say that you've done something beautiful. Consider what, it, what you are holding back right now from God. Spend time in prayer giving it back to him today. I challenge you to read through Psalms 96 today. Read through it a second time. But pause after each verse with a personal, prayerful response to God. I challenge you to even journal any verses that you want to remember so that you and God can have a devotion time together today. Amen. Every beautiful act of worship begins with the heart. If you would like to learn more about how your brokenness can be transformed into a picture of God's beauty, get in God's presence. Learn how to take your experiences while you're in the presence of God. And hold fast to them. Let the power of hope and healing and restoration wash over you like a spring shower. Because when we obey God's promptings and we listen to his voice, you know that still small voice that whispers to our very souls. He fills us with peace. He fills us with satisfaction. He fills us with his beauty. Amen. Meditate on that for just a moment as I close us out in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for today. We thank you, Lord God, for reminding us of your loving kindness, of your faithfulness and your commitment to us. God, you are worth far more praise than we could ever give. Help us to rest in your presence and trust in your plan. Fill us with your perspective until we joyfully lay down our will for yours. Lord, when you look at our lives, we want you to see something beautiful, that our sacrifice is something beautiful to you. We know that you are El Shaddai. The Lord God Almighty, the creator of the universe, and every living thing, the sustainer of everything. You reign over the centuries just as you reign over our lives. Help us to call upon you when the temptations of life present themselves to us. Help us to call upon your very name, El Shaddai, that you may be faithful and show up, that you will not let us be tempted beyond what we can bear, but when we are tempted, you will provide a way out. And you will strengthen us that we may be able to stand up under it, under the temptation. Help us not to turn to our own selves to solve any problems that present themselves as if we could ever solve anything without you. But help us turn in faith to you who is all-powerful, all-knowing, almighty, and able to help us to find the way that you created and made for us to escape. Remind us the next time that we're tempted beyond the power to resist, to call upon your name, El Shaddai, and help us to ask you to strengthen us that we may bear up under it, being confident of your ability to sustain and to bless each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Are there any questions, comments, thoughts, complaints, concerns?
Did God bless you? Did he minister to you during this? Did he speak to your heart or your situation? Did he remind you of some things and reveal some things to you? Are you clear on what God has been doing and saying? This is our time to share an assessment. Anyone this 